Good morning, everyone. I want to share with you in our devotional this morning in a live setting as I come to you from our back uh, backyard with the uh, uh, the trees, the wood line that uh, borders our property. And uh, I want to share with you a, a thought that comes from a little devotional book by Ed Strauss. Um, let me give you a quote from that book and, and then we'll kind of get into uh, this devotional thought this morning. The quote, the quote comes from the eighth chapter of the book entitled The Hobbit. And it was not long before they grew to hate the forest, but they had to go on and on long after they were sick for a sight of the sun and of the sky. The Hobbit is a book by J.R.R. Tolkien, and it was written as a children's story, and, and it has a, a bumbling, lighthearted uh, humor that's mingled uh, with all these frightful images and, and, a, and a, a grim realism that made it an instant classic when it was written or when it appeared back in 1937. When I reflect on this book, the one thing I'm sure of is Tolkien would have never dreamed that excerpts from this, from this book would be developed into devotional thoughts. But that's exactly what has happened through the work of Ed Strauss. Strauss wrote a book entitled A Hobbit Devotional, and he draws upon this hobbit journey making many of the situations these adventurers faced uh, applicable to our day and, and time, and quite a few fit our current situation. And so this morning I've deliberately chosen to go live and, and purposely situated myself with the woods as my backdrop. Uh, I believe this backdrop is a, is a great setting for the devotion this morning. So let's, let's just move into the devotion uh, this morning. The book opens as Gandalf visits the hobbit Bilbo Baggins, and Gandalf invites him to join in on this, uh, this great adventure. Uh, Bilbo declines because he's, he's reluctant to leave the safety and the comfort of his hobbit hole. Uh, quite similar to the way that we are, we have a tendency uh, in, uh, in the church that we are reluctant to to leave the comfort zone that we have. Uh, we don't we don't we don't necessarily we're we're adventurers we're travelers and we like to go and do things, but we don't necessarily want to be adventurers in the sense that we get out of our comfort zone when it comes to church and 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 the setting of the of the church. But back to our story, the next day, um, the, uh, Bilbo is visited by dwarves who believe that uh, Bilbo can be of use to them in their journey to Lonely Mountain. Uh, they want to go there to reclaim this ancestral treasure. Uh, and so Bilbo Baggins reluctantly agrees to go, but he uh, but he, uh, and, and his mind is changed by Gandalf. Uh, Gandalf urges him to join them and they depart for Lonely Mountain. Now here's this band of 14 individuals that set out on this great adventure. I want us to pick up with the, the journey um, when Bilbo and his traveling companions are, are plunged reluctantly into Mirkwood. Mirkwood is this deep, dark woods. Uh, the path through Mirkwood is narrow. And the depths uh, uh, of the woods, they the, the, the wind, wind through this dismal, gloomy uh, setting. Even by day, it's hard to, to visualize where you're going. You have to be careful watching the path. And at, at night, because of the thickness of the woods, it's, it's pitch black. And there's a quote that comes from that. It says, day after day, they trudged in and out among the trees. It was like walking on an endless treadmill in the sunless gloom, and soon monotony set in, numbing their minds and senses. They pushed uh, dispiritedly through dimness, longing for a glimpse of the sun and sky. It wasn't long before they hated the forest. It, you know, the, the point of this is sometimes God calls us to situation where there's a a measure of danger. Uh, sometimes the situation means that there's financial insecurity and it takes a great deal of faith and courage to stick to the path that God has called us to. We're, we're, uh, we find ourselves um, in situations where He allows us to have also the absence of danger and, and sometimes he, 
he removes the financial insecurity and helps us to have uh, the means that we need to carry on and to do the things that he calls us to do. But there's seemingly, uh, there are even times when there's seemingly uh, little challenge to us. And we'll even become bored, bored out of our skulls, feeling like we're dying and we're crying out for change. Um, at such times, I believe, whether it's dealing with a situation like our current situation, whether it's a dealing with a situation in which we, we face uh, maybe terminal illness or some other, some other adversity or challenge that life presents, at such times it takes a strong resolve and a positive attitude to stay the course. And in the present, in the face of their, of, uh, the, the, in the story, in the face of their present adversities and challenges of life, they must clearly stay the course. If they're going to make it through these woods, which is, which is a, at least a two-week journey through this dense, dark uh, forest, uh, they must stay the course. And Gandalf's advice to them before they even begin this journey is this. He says, think of the treasure at the end and forget the forest. That advice rang loud and clear as they, had to, as they stayed the course. I believe the Bible gives us similar advice. Because in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 35 and 36, it says, So don't throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you need endurance, so that after you have done God's will, you may receive what was promised. We need perseverance. We need endurance. And you say, well, okay, so we need endurance. But how do I get it? Uh, well, often the simplest way and the best way is to forget the forest. Forget the forest around us and keep our eyes on our future hope. Now, that's difficult to do in a situation that we're, that we're faced with presently. But it's possible as we look to, to God and focus our attention upon God, look to Him as, as our Redeemer, as, as our Rescuer, and, and we focus upon Him rather than fo focus upon, focusing upon this present situation. Uh, we, we, lose, we need to lose sight of the weariness of the situation. We need to lose sight of the, of the present crisis, and that's only possible as we look to God. It's, it's very reflective to, to think back to Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Uh, what, what a beautiful passage and, and a beautiful sentiment for this, for this, uh, this time that, we, uh, that we're facing. You see, at this present time, I believe this with all my conviction, and that is that the world needs to see the church at her best. Forget the forest. Remember why you are where you are. God allows you, he's not removed you from this situation. God allows you to work within the framework of this situation to best represent him. God put you here this day and in this present situation for a reason. Be the church. Now more than ever, I believe people are looking at the church to see how she will respond. Be the church. They're looking to you. And, and this is an opportunity that we have to witness for Jesus more than ever before in our lives. Instead of simply giving up, instead of simply sitting down by the side of the forest path, we need to gain a second wind and keep on going. We need to remember we are the church, the hope of the world. I think more than ever, this passage from the book of James that I want to share with you uh, resonates with me in, in such a way that I probably, I probably understand it better now or maybe it has more relevance or meaning to me now than ever before. But in, uh, and, and I want to share with it uh, particularly the way that the, uh, the New International Reader's Version renders this passage. It says, My brothers and sisters, you will face all kinds of trouble. When you do, think of it as pure joy. It's difficult to do, isn't it? It's difficult to think of this present situation as pure joy. 
But James goes on to say, and he says, your faith will be tested. You know that when this happens, it will produce in you the strength to continue. Your faith's going to produce in you the strength to continue. Your faith's going to produce in you the ability to forget the force and focus on the goal. And he, James goes on to say, he says, and you must allow this strength to finish its work. Then will you be will you all uh, then will will be all uh, then you will be all you should be. You will have everything that you need. Let me close with uh, just a thought, and I, and 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 I want you to just consider this as uh, you start your day, or maybe you're ending your day. Maybe you've been involved. Uh, maybe your work uh, has carried you through the through the night, and now you're beginning to end your day. But think of this, although we can't always change our circumstances, we can change our attitude. Thank you, have a great day, and God bless.